Hello, this is Wampire. All right, so I owe you guys an explanation. So the last video that I uploaded, the next level lock flow, um, and and it has like this uh, uh, um, cover photo on there that says bloody mess, and um, you see some blood on my finger. Um, that video, I posted it one day ago, and it's gotten 436 views, which is a lot for me, okay? So I feel like I owe you guys an explanation. Um, in that video, what you see is pretty much the, um, the blueprint, the textbook, the textbook of um, my self-defense system, okay? Um, yeah. So once my student is able to grab my wrist and go into a wrap, which is much more secure, he's using his, his body now to control my arm so that I can't like stab him or use the weapon on him. Um, and then there's a technique called wrenching, which we can't do in practice. We we mimic the motion, but we can't fully do it because we'll hurt each other. There's, there's just no way to wrench softly. Um, so we, you know, we just go f do the motions, which he does. And then the final technique was he went for a finger lock. And when he went for the finger lock, his, it's a peeling type of motion is the way that we do it. And he peeled and his um, fingernail dug into my uh, finger and it just, just, it was bleeding a lot more than what you guys see right there. There, were, there was actually quite a bit of blood that came out from it. Um, and I was like, oh, I better take a photo, <laughs> photo of this. So anyway, the finger locks are brutal. And I think the finger locks are the key here. Okay, super, super important. And, you know, when I think about my own Filipino martial arts training from back in the day, my teacher's teacher was doing finger locks. Okay, and I believe, and I, I said this to you guys before, now that I'm looking back on it, doing some research, that those finger locks, even though he's a Filipino martial arts guy, Professor Remy Presas is a FMA guy, I believe the finger locks come from Professor Wally J, so small circle jiu-jitsu, okay? So it, it is in the system of FMA, Filipino martial arts, that I was learning because Professor Remy Presas integrated. He cross-trained and he put it in there. And there are videos of him doing finger locks and stuff. And I'm pretty sure even if it wasn't where he learned it or his first... Um, exposure to finger locks, I believe Professor Wally J definitely, without a doubt, uh, put a, sharpened it, helped sharpened it, helped improved it for Professor Remy Presa. So that, without a doubt, in my mind, okay. So even looking back um, on my lineage, I'm thinking the finger locks were there. Now I'm really, really seeing the importance of it and how powerful they are. And there's one key point in my own personal history of me grappling. I mean, this happened several times, but I could tell you that I remember one guy in college, this guy was like six foot four. He was an athlete. He was a ex basketball player, high school uh, basketball star in, in his high school. Anyway, I remember putting him in a heel hook. I didn't want to spar him. He kind of made me. He basically came to my apartment and challenged me, right? He was like, where have you been? How come you're not at, at class? So it's definitely a bully tactic, right? And it's, it's pretty sad. It's almost like uh, what you would imagine Cobra Kai back in the 80s. Not, I'm not talking about the new Cobra Kai, but the back, uh, the you know, so you're part of this dojo, this school, and you're not there anymore. And then the other students come in and they kind of like start bullying you. So that's kind of what this was. Is he came to my apartment and he was like, how come you're not coming to school anymore? And, and this and that. And uh, yeah, he's the enforcer, right? I put him in a heel hook. And I remember his foot was so massive. Honestly, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to hurt the guy because then he would be like, 
wait a minute, your skills gotten better. What, what's going on? What, what's the secret here? You know, you're not going to school, so you should be, um, ring rust kind of thing. You're not sparring. You're not training. Why are you better? Right. And I didn't want that revealed, but I put him in a heel hook. I didn't want to do it, but I should have still been able to crank it if I wanted to. No problem. And I should have been able to tore out his knee if I wanted to. I remember doing it and going, his, yes, he's six foot four and he's not thin. So he's, he wasn't fat, but I mean, he still looked decently athletic and stuff. It just, I, I, I was like, this is, I would have to crank this with everything I got. And even then, I don't know if I could. So that, that was the conclusion that I got from that. And I was like, well, it's a good thing I don't need to because that's not my goal right now. So I, did, I let it go. But I remember thinking that in my head, like, damn, I, I thought once I get the position, this is a done, sealed deal. And basically, my ego would be completely satisfied knowing that I could have beaten him no problem. But the reality was, even though I got the position, the submission, it was, I could tell, I had to be honest with myself and I could tell it's going to be very, very, very hard. And even then, I don't know if I can get it on this foot. It felt like a giant foot is what it felt like. Now, there was another incident where, um, it, it was supposed to be, it, you know, it, it was a friendly sparring and this time it was after this and, and it was in a different city in Austin, actually. So that was in San Antonio. This is in Austin. And a guy from that college I was going to, which was ACC, Austin Community College. And this guy had a massive neck. I took his back and I was like, yeah, this is a done deal. I have the rear naked choke. It should be over. His neck was so huge that I just felt like I couldn't finish him with it. I would have to try really hard. I'm talking about like with killer instinct. So just me using technique and solid, you know, putting some solid force in there was not enough, which was, I was like, damn, I'd really have to do this like my life depended on it. Then maybe I could get it, but on a friendly match, it just, you know, yes, it got competitive, but still to, to, to have to go that far to finish it just felt ridiculous. So those are two inc incidents that easily submission, even though I had, I had it, wasn't able to do it, okay? Now, here's the final story. And I've said this before on, on YouTube, but um, the three of us back at UTSA, so this happened before any of those stories. Back at UTSA, um, at the Convocation Center, which is a big brown building, that's where they do their uh, basketball matches, volleyball matches and stuff, in the second floor, and it's like an open thing, and, and then on the second floor, there is a uh, there was a wrestling mat, big old, old wrestling mat, probably not there anymore, but that's where the Aikido Club worked out at, and I was part of the Aikido Club, and so were my two buddies. Actually, Chris was the president, and Chris was an ex-high school wrestler. He was close to 300 pounds. He was trying to lose weight, so let's say he was 275, 280, something like that, about 6'2". The other guy, um, and, and he was a couple of years ahead of me, um, and then the other guy was Richard. Richard, unfortunately, no longer with us. He was an older guy. Uh, he already had his degree. He, already, he was a dentist, so he's already, you know, but then he came back to get his second degree, a second, like a bachelor's again. So even though he already has his, you know, he's a dentist, full-blown dentist, but he, he went back. And so he's a much older guy. He he's, could have been easily one of the professors at the university. He weighed about, let's say, 180, okay? And uh, about six foot at that time, maybe six one, maybe, something like that, six foot tall, or somewhere along those lines. I was, I'm, I'm about 5'10", and at that time I weighed 140, okay? And... Uh, we're, we were probably doing some Aikido stuff. Uh, those guys uh, could have been getting ready to get tested. I wasn't part of that, but I would I would work out with them at the Aikido club, but I, I wasn't part of like being graded and tested and nothing like that. Uh, like I said, Chris was the president, and uh, Richard was also uh, on board. I don't know if he was secretary or who, who knows, some of, the, some of the position on there. Anyway, from across, because... 
there's the weight room on, on the other side. The guy had been watching us from, from the weight room. He comes in. You guys doing martial arts? Loud, huge, big entrance, big dude. Easily 6'2", between 6'2 to 6'4", somewhere around that. And uh, wasn't 300 pounds, but let's say about 250. Okay, so has easily like 100 pounds on me. Okay, so this guy, he had his uh, weightlifting belt on him. Um, maybe some of his fingers were taped up. Just, you could tell he was lifting weights, you know, t-shirt shorts, and comes in. And he's like, I love martial arts. You know, I'm a judo, I don't know, I don't know if he said black belt. I think he said judo black belt. Um, but, you know, let's say a judo guy, just to be safe. Big dude comes in and he basically challenges us. Chris takes it. And Chris is no slouch being an ex-high school wrestler. Chris uh, also, it's not like he hasn't wrestled since high school. And now this was like towards the end of his college years there. Like he was almost about to get his bachelor's. So four years, right? I, I would think. Anyway, um, I've seen Chris wrestle there a couple of times. So I know Chris is not just, you know, ex-wrestler a long time ago. No, he's, he's still, he's no slouch, right? So anyway, uh, him and Chris, they go at it, and it honestly looks like King Kong versus Godzilla to me. Just two huge, massive dudes going at it, wrestling around on the ground, and they pretty much dead even. And we're going, damn, look at Chris go, wow, because we, you know, we thought this other guy just, he looked scary, honestly. And he looks intimidating, and he had the confidence, and he came in just challenging us. We were all scared, and Chris you know, good for him, took the challenge, and he was bringing it, so it was a draw, and then Chris was like, oh man, that, that felt great, I feel good, afterwards, right, and so after we declared it a draw, and I don't know how long it, they went, I don't know if it was 10 minutes, you know, um, I, I don't, I really don't know, but it felt like a while, they went for a little while, Chris got up, and um, he's like, yeah, I feel great, that was awesome, um, you know, drenched in sweat and everything, breathing, both of them breathing hard. But, um, yeah. And, and Chris was like, um, yeah, I love wrestling. I feel great. Um, and then he just took off and I'm like, Chris, you're going to leave us alone with this monster. What the hell? He just left. He's like, all right, guys, I got to go. He just took off. And I'm like, damn it. And so this guy's like, I'm just getting started. Right. And he's like, who's next? And he's looking at the two of us, Richard and myself. He, and, I kid you not, he, Richard's like, I have arthritis, I don't want, you know, not me, and I'm too old kind of thing, and he just grabs Richard with one arm, just grabs him and curls him like a dumbbell, and I'm like, holy mo, and, and sets him down like gently, but, but, you know, sets him back down standing, you know, really, like, just grabbed him like a dumbbell, curled him and put him back down, it looked like a mammoth, um, a woolly mammoth, the snout just grabbed Richard, hoisted him up and put him down like Cthulhu did that or something. You know, it's just insane. Um, I'm telling you guys this. I don't believe it myself. It defies physics. I don't know how this guy could just curl, you know, 180 pounds. It, it just doesn't make sense. But I know that's that's what happened. I saw it with my own two eyes, you know. It's crazy. So anyway... After that, he looks at me. It's like, what about you? And I'm like, no, thanks. No way. You know, um, I was like, look at the size difference, you know, and, and I, I was like, and I have nothing to prove. I'm I, here to train and get better kind of thing. I got no beef with you kind of thing, you know. Anyway, next thing I know it, he throws me onto the mat and he's on top of me. Like a great white shark is on top of me, like instantly. I'm furious at this point. I am mad because I said no, and I hate that. I hate people that is, you know, doesn't get it. I said no thanks, and he didn't care, and this is a bully. He's twice my size. He literally has like 100 pounds on me, threw me onto the mat, and he's on top of me. Um, yeah, so to me, that's not cool at all. So I am mad, really, really mad. I think my instinct was to try to put him into the guard. And I was, and I, I don't really remember exactly. My memory is hazy at this point. 
Um, I'm going on instinct because the shock of being thrown on there and then trying to put him in the guard and he was stopping it. So I was going, damn it, I need the guard. I need the freaking guard. You know, from there I could arm bar him. I could do stuff. I need to get that. I need to defend myself because right now I'm in open waters against a great white shark. So that's bad, bad news. And so I'm trying to get there. I don't even know what the rules are or what, you know, is this a grappling only? What's going on? This guy just threw me onto the mat. I don't know, you know. Uh, I'm definitely not a wrestler, so then just pin me, you know, one, two, three. Um, is, is it already over? Thank goodness. But, you know, he was on top, still going. So at this point for me, it's survival. As far as I know, this is a street fight. And so from there, I'm trying to put him back into the guard, put him into the guard. He And he starts saying, stop, stop, don't do it. You know, it's it's over. He's he's saying stuff like this. So I go, what? What's going on? Is he hurt? So stupid me. I listen to him, and he uses that to take my back. So now he's on my back. Now I am double mad, right? I am double steaming. I am pissed at this point. So at this point, I don't even remember what I did, but it was like no mercy. Now you know this is me full power. I was able to spin out, take his back, and choke him out. So I got him in the rear naked choke, and uh, he tapped out. And he was surprised. He, I mean, you know, I basically took his back and, and you know, got the choke. I don't remember if it was like this. Sorry, the, um, the lighting here is I'm backlit, so I apologize. I don't remember if it was like this or if it was a full-blown uh, rear naked choke. Um, but I did that. So I fell back and, and, uh, so he was, he went back on top of me. So it was like he was crucified on top of me, you know? And, um, so he tapped out. I let go. I'm breathing hard cause I'm really mad. The adrenaline and all that. And the guy's like, no one's ever done that to me before. He, he was like, Hey, no, that's great. You know, I thought he was going to get mad and we're, we're going to start now we're going to like, he's come swinging at me. So I was, I was like getting ready for that. Uh, and, um, at that point, you no, know, he was like, no, that was a good experience. Cause I've never experienced that before. That, that was great. You want to go again? And I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> right. Once again, he throws me onto the mat. And so when we were having this conversation, I was like, okay, then it's done. Right. So my hands are down. I, I wasn't like, OK, is, is there a problem here? So I was like, OK, it's cool because he just said, no, that was great. That was good experience for me. No one's ever done that to me. So now it's like, OK, all right, he's cool now. But then he goes, do you want to go again? And I'm like, no. And then he throws me onto the mat. So here's round two. He's trying to get revenge. This time he's on top. He's trying to get some kind of choke on me, almost like a guillotine or something. I grab the fingers and I twist them with everything I got. So it's a finger lock. This and he screams bloody murder. It's not even a tap. He's like, ah, oh! you know, so like that. And I look at him like, you know, you want some more? And he's like, I'm done. He's like, my fingers, man, I, I can't handle that. I am done. So he didn't want any more after that. And then he actually said to me, he said, I'm a bouncer here. And uh, he, he said, you should become a bouncer. He's trying to give me credit, like, because I beat him, you know, so now it's like, you're that tough, you should be a bouncer. And I was, I was like, no, if, if I was a bouncer, I'd be in fights every night because no one would think that I was tough or no one would think I was any good. A bouncer is, you got to be a human shield. This guy is very intimidating looking, make a perfect human shield. If he says, hey, you guys better cool it, People are going to listen. If I say that, I'm going to get into a fight, you know. So it was a ridiculous statement for him to say that, but he was trying to be nice, I guess. And um, I remember on UTSA seeing him one day. I was like, is that the guy? I saw a dude just walking amongst, you know, there's a bunch of students. People are walking. Saw a dude like head taller than everybody else. It's like, that guy looks familiar. And I'm like, is that him? And I start zeroing in and, and looking at him, just people watching. And it was him. And he's wearing, uh, looked to me like an Air Force outfit. So I don't know if he was Air Force. I don't know how you could be in the Air Force and be a bouncer. Uh, if he did, he had to have been doing that in secret because I don't think they would allow that. And I, I don't know how you have the time to be doing something like that. But anyway, anyway, um, 
So what I'm trying to say is finger locks, the best submission that I could think of, the best submission, I think my lineage, Professor Remy Pressas, Wally J, they had it right. It's about the finger locks. The finger locks are amazing. And when I look back on it, I was fortunate to have this experience experiences where they kind of told me, but I didn't really understand the lessons there that finger locks is the way to go. So just my own personal opinion. Uh, please think about it. You know, think, think about finger locks. And uh, that's it for now. Thank you for viewing and take care, folks.